What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn hits back at Team Fury with saying this, where's your mojo? Okay. Hearn has hit back at Team Fury as negotiating negotiations process for a massive world heavyweight title fight between the Gypsy King and his star, Anthony Joshua. The fighters have, of course, both signed both contracts for a two-fight deal. Hopefully, the first one will take place in the summer with a rematch before the end of 2021. Now, this is what Hearn says. Hearn says, all I'm doing is crafting my nuts off to try and make this fight. And I'm traveling around the world this week trying to get it done. And all I hear from the other side is, yeah, well, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not a great time at the moment. And I said to Aram the other day, mate, where's your mojo? I'm flying around the world. Then people will say to me, oh, well, I say an interview with this guy. And he, he said he doesn't even think it's going to happen. AJ is 100% full in full camp and his mind this is the only fight that's happening next. Whoever comes up with the best opportunity, it's on. I hope that will come from the other side as well because everybody signed the contract. Now they have to approve the site and the deal, but it's going to, it's going to be significant. We've already had offers. I don't like the noise I'm hearing from the camp. Maybe they've been let down before. Maybe they just don't trust people. Frustrating. Herm describes the doubts from Team Fury as frustrating and appears surprised that there is a lack of unity given all parties have signed the contract. He also said, I'm not traveling around the world away from my family and just holding up folders of quarantines and tests and exemptions. <clears throat> I'm doing it because I'm trying to make the biggest fight in the world. So if you're with me, as you showed you are by signing the contract, be with us. It's frustrating, but maybe they think they won't come up with the goods, but we will. Hearn said July is now the likely landing date for the first Fury and Joshua fight, which would allow for a rematch in November or December. As for the venue, British fight fans would obviously love to see the two current world heavyweight champions meet at Wembley Stadium in front of 90,000 people. COVID-19 restrictions means that the prospect is unlikely this year and Saudi Arabia remains the hot favorite to play host instead. Those are the words of Eddie Hearn. Now, let me counterpunch. As my last video that uh, I posted about this issue, um, we were talking about John Fury, okay? And John Fury was saying this, saying that, I don't think it's going to happen. We're going to give you to June. You, if you don't fight us to June, you know, uh, we're going to fight somebody else. See, Eddie Hearn reached through the proper channels. He didn't mention John Fury. John Fury is the father of Tyson Fury. Does he have any influence? I'm pretty sure he does to a certain degree, but it's not how... Uh, Bob Arum or Frank Warren should be uh, influenced regarding this matter. Okay. So in other words, Eddie Hearn went to Bob Arum because Bob Arum is the promoter of Tyson Fury. He didn't mention uh, Frank Warren though, but he mentioned Bob because I guess he has a, he has a better relations working relationship with Bob Arum. So it makes sense. And he's asking Bob like, Hey, where's your mojo? What's the deal? What are you like? Why are we hearing? Oh, I don't think it's going to happen, you know, from Team Tyson. And then really who's stirring up the shit is Tyson and his father. So if these guys have, have had another plan going, I think they and I suggest they consort that with their promoter. OK, they should talk to Bob Arum about what they plan to do. And Bob Arum should communicate with them as well. And I think this is the problem with this issue. The issue really is the communication. You guys signed the contract, but then 
you know, um, it's all about track records. Does that mean they're going to actually fight? Let me put it to you this way. If you look at the, the record or the reputation of Tyson Fury, the things that he normally does, Tyson Fury has signed a couple contracts that he didn't honor. You know, and I think this is really backfiring him because the times that he should have fought those guys, he should have fought Klitschko a second time. He should have fought Wilder a third time. He should have because he signed the contracts to do so. And he should fight Anthony Joshua twice. Why? Because he signed the contract. So when you sign the contract, all the doubt, all the talk, all the bullshit that you talk that's coming out of your mouth should stop. Because you, at that point, decided, hey, I'm going to fight this guy. I want to fight this guy. I want all the belts and I want all the money. So let's sign this fight to get, well, let's sign this contract to get these fights done. That should be the issue here. Not, oh, well, you know, I don't think it's going to happen. And I don't, I don't think it's the right time. And you got this time and I haven't fought yet and this, that, and the other. Well, you knew that before you signed the contract. You knew that. Your promoters knew that. If they cared for your well-being, they would have got you a freaking fight. They would have got you a fight before. Okay, they didn't have to wait around and then all of a sudden push you into Anthony, uh, Anthony Joshua, a huge mega fight negotiation, a uh, 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 sit down, and you know you're not ready. Then you start talking about inactivity and, oh, that's how fighters lose, even though they're better than that fighter. The other fighter wins because he's active and, you know, that guy that's the better guy ain't active. And, you know, it, it, like that's kind of stuff like that bothers me because it shows that there's, look, there's something that they want to do. Team Fury wants a tune-up fight. And I think what they should honestly do, sit down and tell communication again, hey, before Anthony Joshua, we need a tune-up fight. But it, it, but but saying, hey, it has to be in June or we're moving on, that just makes me think like it's a cop-out because if the fight is projected to be in July, why are you bitching about June? Because that's not too far away. It's a, that's a month past that date. You know, and it would shut everybody else up with the other stuff Tyson Fury has going on unless Team Fury ha hasn't been 100% honest. But what's really going on? Because that could be the case. Why could it be the case? We could speculate because there's no clear ground of that arbitration and none of that. It's not. But the thing is, the good thing is, Eddie Hearn's not talking about it. Bob Arum's not talking about it. So, you know, chances are that's not an issue. But it doesn't make it any better because that's another example of Team Fury Signing a contract to fight a particular fighter and it's never happening. Okay, and then this is the second time he's done that. Third time's a charm, they say, right? So at the end of the day, I think Bob Arum should, you know, consult his team and try to make this fight done. You know, and then I look at this, I'm hearing Eddie Hearn's flying all around the world. Well, why is Eddie Hearn flying all around the world without Bob? You know what I mean? It's like a one-sided thing, and it's all the pressures on one side. Yes, I know they're the A side, but at the end of the day, there's two sides of the story, always, because it's the side that's calling the shots, but it's the other side that has to agree on those shots that the A side calls. Counterpunch. But anyway, um, you guys tell me what you think about Eddie Hearn hitting back at Team Fury. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been Counterpunch. Peace.